Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 17 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Just jumping back into things, still using the new Snorlax team that we debuted last week. Do want to use this team, like I mentioned, for a little bit longer, but I've got some new ideas that I want to try out eventually as well. So, yep, we're just going to jump onto the ladder and see who we can find for today. As always, if you guys enjoyed Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for supporting all the content that I've been putting out and for watching Road to Rank. I know I haven't been the most consistent YouTuber in the last couple of weeks or so, so I do want to apologize for that. Uh, but I really appreciate all of you who continue to watch my videos and support me. It really means a lot. In, yeah, I haven't been attending tournaments in the last couple of weekends, and I'm kind of taking a break from events after I won Oregon Regionals. I think I'll probably be in Toronto for Regionals, since I'll be in New York uh, at that time. Uh, I only have two and a half weeks left of college here, so pretty much finishing up my time here in California, going back home, and then I'll be in Toronto. Uh, there's also a decent chance I'm going to be in Madison for that Regional Championship as well. So if either of you, if any of you guys are going to either of those two tournaments, definitely come and say hello to me. I'd love to meet some of you. And uh, right now, my goal is really ending the school semester as strongly as possible, getting content out, and then uh, really prepping up for the summer, and of course the World Championships in a couple of months, which I would love to do well in, especially since I didn't compete last year. So, yep, just kind of a quick update on stuff in general, as we're going to find Danny Bird from Italy with a rating of 1499, so matchmaking uh, <laughs> with a pretty familiar looking team, Tapu Lele, the Driftblum, Garchomp, Metagross, that's not a Metagross, that's a Magnezone, Snorlax, and Gyarados. So, obviously, this is the Drift Lele combination. The real question is, whose variant is this? Uh, pretty much, five of the six same Pokemon from Shoma Honami slash Zoe Lowe's team. Uh, those were two very notable Drift Lele teams, but with Snorlax there as the last Pokemon. So, let's see. Drift Lele is definitely a tricky matchup. Hmm... I mean, I can lead with Tapu Fini immediately. Tapu Fini Lax actually might be a decent idea. Because I can just basically target around the Drift Bloom and render it relatively useless. Of course, uh, Drift Bloom is a concern in terms of late game damage, because my damage I'll put against it isn't that great. Although, I suppose I could just lead Arcanine and Pheromosa as well. And just Choice Band Flare Blitz. Yeah. And in the back go with Snorlax. Uh, Feeny just doesn't do enough offense as I really wanted to in this, so I don't think I'm going to bring it. The last Pokemon is really a question between Gyarados, I mean, sorry, Persian and Ninetales, but I like uh, Ninetales a little bit more here because I can freeze dry to one-shot the Gyarados and also Blizzard. So, we're going to look, or we're going to get into the first game of today's episode, and let's see what my opponent's packing. Yeah, I'd be surprised to see anything but Drift Lele as a lead here, and if my opponent doesn't lead Drift Lele, I mean, I feel pretty good about my chances, but even with Drift Lele, still feel okay. I did keep Snorlax on the bench ultimately, but I'm going to go Pheromos and Arcanine, which is a super offensive lead here. I'm going to see, yep, Drifflum on top of Lele. So, if my opponent doesn't protect the top of Lele, I can just get a double knockout. I'd imagine a protect has to come out here, pretty much. But I'm just going to Flare Blitz the Drifflum, and with Choice Man, I think I have a good chance of just knocking out Drifflum. And go for the... Well, let's see. Actually, never mind. No, sorry. I did bring Snorlax, uh, which is actually pretty essential. I didn't bring Tapu Fini, but I think I'm just going to launch a Flare Blitz into Drift Bloom and Acid Downpour Lele. And if Lele is Specs, then this will just be a double knockout, but it switches out, which is a smart play. So I'm guessing that is Specs Lele as Gyarados comes in. Okay. It's actually really smart because I also won't be able to pick up the knockout in Drift Bloom with a Flare Blitz. So great play by my opponent there. And there's the Tailwind. Yep. Uh, this does give me an opportunity to at least bring in my Snorlax, but, uh, yeah, I was hoping to catch the Tapu Lele off guard there. I don't know whether my opponent knows my sets or was just afraid of, you know, attacks from Drifloom, or sorry, from Arcanine and Pheromosa, and uh, it's a great Gyarados switch in there for sure, though. Yeah, definitely a smart play. So Acid Downpour at minus one isn't going to do too much damage. I suppose around 50% or so to Gyarados. Let's see. Yep, just around the money there. Brings it just under. And uh, Proxit Citru Citrus Berry. So this looks like pretty much Shoma or Zoe's team verbatim. Which means that will be Dragon Dance. As, uh, yeah, Flare Blitz there. Unfortunately, does not pick up the knockout there on Drifloom anymore. But that's okay. I think I can stall out this Tailwind. Uh, I'm going to switch in... Mm, how do I want to play this? 
Yeah, I'm gonna switch in Snorlax for the Arcanine slot. Mm, if I were my opponent, I would Dragon Dance with Gyarados here. And Shadow Ball Pheromosa. So, I mean, I could pull a double switch here. But I, I basically want to conserve Ninetales' Sash if possible, because Blizzard, after Tailwind expires, would be very helpful. I'm running out of time here, so I think I'm just going to switch into Snorlax this turn and Protect. Because then I can switch back out into Arcanine the following turn. Uh, great switch around my opponent in turn 1, so we'll see how this next turn plays out. You can imagine Drifloom's going to stay in and just try to get some Shadow Balls off, but it can't touch Snorlax at least. And if it burns me with Will-O-Wisp, it actually helps me because I have Facade. And I didn't bring Feeny. Yep, so there's Shadow Ball going into Protect, and probably Dragon Dance, maybe Waterfall. Okay, just a Waterfall. So my opponent playing it safe there, but that works for me. Does a good amount of damage, but uh, should be fine. So this first turn, I'm going to go for a Stockpile. Now we'll probably see a Will-O-Wisp into that slot. Um, maybe I should conserve Arcanine. Part of me thinks I should conserve Arcanine. I don't know if a Poison Jab knocks out Driftbloom. Probably not. I'm definitely going to stockpile here. And... You know what? What the heck? Let's bring out Arcanine. Yeah. Because even if I get knocked out, then I get a free switch back out. And then I can just attack. Because Pheromosa... Nah, maybe Arcanine's more important than Pheromosa here. But it outspeeds the potential Garchomp in the back, which is my main fear. will o -Wisp. Okay, nice. So, with Facade, that's actually going to help me more than anything. Still have my Berry. There's a Waterfall. Yep, going into the Arcanine slot. Going to pick up the Knockout, that's fine. And I get my first stockpile going. So, I don't know if I want to Belly Drum this game, but uh, the stockpile here is good. Although, maybe I should have conserved Arcanine because... The thing is, now Drifloom could get a potential second Tailwind up, and I don't like that. Hmm. I'll bring in Ninetales this turn, yeah. The issue is I can't touch Drifloom. And if you're my opponent, you should probably double up into my Ninetales. That would be the smartest play. So the question is, do I want my opponent to get a second Tailwind up? That might actually not be the worst of issues. Based off who my opponent has out right now. I think I'm actually just going to stockpile a second turn here and protect. Yeah. I think Snorlax is my key to winning this one. But that's the issue. That's why Drifloom's so strong. If you don't knock it out and it's the last turn of Tailwind. Like, I, don't, I can't really safely knock it out because you can just double up onto Drifloom here. Which looks like what my opponent's going for. Yeah. Although, actually, I don't know. I forgot that like, Gyarados is at minus one from the Intimidate. I don't know if that would have even knocked me out. So I think I probably should have just attacked there. Yeah, that was a bad play. Alright, no worries. So, given this turn, you would imagine that like, Gyarados is going to protect. And if Gyarados protects, then I can take advantage of that by going for an Aurora Veil. And a third, and a recycle. Yeah, so I'm going to predict the Gyarados Protect and Aurora Veil here. Because basically I need to stall out Tailwind for, and if I get Aurora Veil, then Shadow Ball plus Waterfall should have knocked me out. And then I can pick up a double knockout the next turn, and Snorlax is slowly beefing up. So, yeah. Because then it'll be Aurora Veiled Snorlax at plus two defense and special defense. And it does protect there, good. I think I should have attacked last turn though. I... I didn't know whether Waterfall plus Shadow Ball could knock me out. We do just see a second Tailwind go up, but that's actually fine with me. Snorlax is a pretty decent Pokemon at stalling out Tailwind, so this game's going to probably take a while, but uh, by not knocking out the Drifloom, I prevent a free switching, which is important. The thing is, I don't know that Drifloom's last attack. Uh, it could be Destiny Bond, although it hasn't gone for it yet. But it also could be Sunny Day, which could be scary. Um, but I'll probably just protect my Ninetales this turn to scout out for Drifloom's last attack. Now, uh, I've got my berry back now, which is good, and I can go for a third stockpile, which I most definitely will go for. And weirdness disappears, that doesn't really matter right now. Yeah, because my... Ninetales really sweeps... Drifloom's also going to slowly faint to hail. I don't think there are enough turns. Yeah, I'm only three turns left, so it won't... That's okay. Um... So I'm going to go for a third stockpile here, and I'm just going to protect Ninetales. 
to scout out for what Drifting goes for, because it could be Sunny Day. It could be a Destiny Bond, and I, I do not want to get Destiny Bonded right now. Okay, it's Rain Dance. Uh, that's fine with me, although that does increase, obviously, the damage output of Waterfall. Um, yeah, so this is this looks like it's Shoma's team verbatim, then. Waterfall into Snorlax. Nice play. <laughs> but that does absolutely nothing after he Intimidates. Doesn't flinch me either, so I get another stockpile up, which is good. Uh, I wonder if Waterfall plus Shadow Ball knocks me out, because I have Aurora Veil up now. I feel like it shouldn't. And I have my Berry now, so I don't have to worry about that. I think I should just attack this turn. Yeah, I'll just go for the Facade onto Gyarados and the Freeze Dry onto Drift Bloom, I think. That works for me. I could get doubled up here onto Ninetales. I probably will. Yeah, I don't think Waterfall should knock me out. Uh, decrease the special defense, but that's fine. Ooh, Dragon Dance, actually. Um, that makes sense, because my Snorlax is getting so boosted, but that means that like, I can stall out Tailwind successfully now. Uh, although Gyarados will be faster, but I think, I mean, another Facade, Facade should two-shot Gyarados here. Yeah, especially with Snorlax being so bulky, I mean, I'm at plus three defense, special defense. Oh, I actually just picked up the knockout there, that's so nice. Yeah, so, people are like, oh, why do you run Facade? I mean, I think that demonstrates it pretty well. Now we've got plus three Snorlax with defense, special defense. I haven't even used Belly Drum yet, but I might not even need to. And now I can stall out Tailwind since Drifloom's gone. So it really comes down to what my opponent's last Pokemon is. It's actually going to be Magnezone. Okay. But uh, this means that Faramosa should be able to close out this one. Yeah. If you're my opponent here, you probably double up into Snorlax. This is the last turn of Tailwind, I believe, right? Oops, wrong side. Yes. So, since I'm pretty sure that Specs Lele, I'm just going to Facade to put it in KO range from a Poison Jab. And I don't want to switch in right now, so I'll just go for a Freeze Dry to get some extra damage off. I'm pretty sure a Spec Psychic plus a Z move from Magnezone won't knock me out unless my opponent crits me. That did nothing! <laughs> oh, Stockpile lacks how I love you so. Nice. And there's the Z move. Yep. Presumably targeting down Snorlax, but uh, it should be fine. I think uh, Freeze Dry plus Facade plus another Freeze Dry might just be able to knock out this Tapu Lele. Maybe I should have recycled just to be a little bit safer because I wasted a Z-move here, but I don't think even plus three, I mean, Gigabolt Havoc against the plus three Lax is going to do that much. Maybe around 25% because I still have Aurora Veil up as well. <laughs> I kind of feel bad. Yeah, so freeze dry. Okay, yeah. Oh, I actually gets a crit there. So I thought. Uh, yeah, I kind of underestimate how much freeze dry does. And facade is so strong. Oh my goodness. The Snorlax doesn't even have that much of an attack investment, but it was able to just one shot that Lele. Or not one shot, but pick up the knockout on Lele and Gyarados, which is very nice. So now I'm in a pretty good position. I mean, I'm just going to go for a recycle to play it safe. And freeze dry breaks a potential sash. If Ninetales gets knocked out, then Pheromos in the back can just high jump kick twice. So Magnezone would need a double protect or a high jump kick miss, but then Snorlax at this point beats wins the 1v1 against Magnezone anyway, since I have Belly Drum as well. So, yep, opponent's just going to play it out, totally respectable, but I don't think there's much my opponent can really do at this position. I actually even get the freeze, which was <laughs> not necessary. Um, yeah, I would have preferred to end the game with Faramosa, but now I can recycle, because then I could have brought in Faramosa and even speed swap for some more shenanigans. But, yeah, now Snorlax can go for a Belly Drum. Roar Rail finally goes off, but it did more than its job. That's why I added Ninetales. Uh, I'm kind of glad I added Ninetales, and I brought it to every game so far, so it's definitely been pulling its weight. And I don't see a reason to switch out, so I'm just going to Freeze Dry, because at this point I'm just waiting for the free switch into Pheromos anyway. But this game should end next turn after I get the Belly Drum off. So the Freeze is not really mattering, but it obviously helps. <laughs> and another turn of Freeze. A little bit unfortunate for my opponent. But with Pheromos in the back, there's pretty much nothing my opponent can do. Even with a critical hit on Snorlax, like a critical hit won't even knock me out. Although I guess it could have put me in some weird belly drum ranges, but yeah, I just heal all the way back up. And I'm pretty sure even a crit Thunderbolt won't knock me out here. <laughs> so all I have to do is go for a Facade. And that's going to be game.
But yeah, Facade really, really doing a lot of work there because it ensured the knockout onto Tapu Lele and Gyarados. I honestly wasn't expecting either of those to be knocked out. Uh, but yeah, I, I mainly had Facade just because uh, my Snorlax was in max happiness when I was, <laughs> as Magnezone does fall out, uh, thaw out. Gonna go for the Flash Cannon, but Ninetales is not the right Pokemon to really target because it's not doing anything at this point. And uh, Snorlax here should be able to finish up the job. So I'm glad I finally got to have another game where Snorlax really demonstrated its weight. As uh, it picks up three of the knockouts in this game. Magnezone, Gyarados, and Tapu Lele. And that's the thing with Drift Lele. I mean, I think, like, you normally think, oh, I can just overwhelm Snorlax with offense. But basically, the crucial turn was getting the Aurora Veil up, plus stockpiling in front of a Drifloom. Basically, Drifloom can't do anything against Snorlax, which is why I brought it out. And why I specifically wasn't trying to get knockouts. Uh, it's really important when you play against Drift Lele to render that slot relatively useless. So that, although, that's why an attack like Destiny Bond is something I ran on my Drift Bloom, because it prevents the opponent from... It makes the opponent more scared, right? Because it often ensures you to get a second Tailwind up, and it also means like your opponent can play a little bit uh, more fearlessly with Drift Bloom. But Snorlax, definitely the right call in that last game, man. I'm glad he demonstrated why Stockpile can be so good. Because my opponent literally had no offense for it. But we're going to find Raikou from Texas for our second opponent of the day. Uh, this should be exciting because Raikou is one of the top players in North America. He won a regional championship this year. And he's one of the younger players to do it. So definitely a very, very good player. And uh, someone to keep your eyes out for. I think he's actually competing in the Brazil International this weekend. So uh, you guys can definitely watch out for him because that event will be streamed. And uh, yeah, he's one of the highest ranked players in the country. He got top four at Worlds back in 2014 as a senior. And then... 2011 got second as a junior so he's got a team of smeargle zerkatry Faramosa, arcanine tapu lele and the now ego so that's a really scary team because i have no idea what smeargle set he's running um huh i don't like this matchup at all <laughs> Faramosa is really good here I guess I have Misty Terrain from Tapu Fini, but Fini is really weak against the Zerkatry and the Now Ego. So, what do I want to lead with, though? That's the question. I also don't know if it's Scarf Smeargle. I like Arcanine, I think. Mm, I kind of want to lead Ninetales, though, but... Should I bring Snorlax here? I feel like I should still, because it's pretty good. Yeah. But I'm really worried because this could be like the Tail Glow Zerkatry kind of set. So he could just be going for like a fail, fake out Tail Glow. <sighs> but I didn't want to bring Persian because there is the threat of Tapu Lele in the back. So the first question is, is it Scarf or Sash Smeargle? Second question is, what does that Smeargle try to accomplish? Because obviously if Zerkatry gets a Tail Glow up, then Snorlax will struggle to get a stockpile. Like it's not, I'm not going to win that trade off. Maybe I should have led uh, Ninetales for spread damage, actually, because, yeah, we're definitely going to see Smear Gold. It's going to be now Ego partnered up next to it. <sighs> okay. Mm. I mean, I can bring in Snorlax here, but... Actually, th I think that's how I should play this. Uh... Smear has to fake out one of two Pokemon, right? I do have close combat, so I could just close combat now, Ego, but like the safe place to fake out Pheromosa and just Sludge Bomb Arcanine. So what I could do here is actually go for an extreme speed. And a high jump kick. Is this is risk oh wow. Oh, is it Scarf? It's now Ego? Wow, okay. Well, was not expecting that, but that works out for sure. I Yeah, I didn't protect there because I felt like he, his play was to just double up on my Arcanine. Uh, we do see a Spore come out, though, which is bad. Targeting my Pheromosa. <sighs> Smeargo is in KO range, though, and I did get rid of Pheromosa, which is good. The defense increase, that's fine, as long as it's not evasion. I mean, that was a really good turn one, but the thing is, now I'm locked into E-Speed. There could be a Tapu Lele in the back, and Pheromosa is asleep. As uh, Fairbolt that comes in from Ian's end. Okay. Mm. I don't really want to get put to sleep, so I could just extreme speed the Smeargo slot, but part of me also wants to switch Arcanine out and then back in. 
but I don't. The thing is, I also want to conserve Nine Tails' sash potentially. You know, I'm just gonna extreme speed Pheromosa because I am choice banded. And I'll just poison jab. So Smeargo needs to follow me here. If not, it would just get knocked out. Or Tabu Lele could switch in. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's okay, although, yeah, maybe I should have switched out my Arcanine. But I know Pheromosa doesn't have Sash. It's probably Z moved. Yep. Fighting Z move, I'd guess. Yeah. Uh, I should have switched Arcanine out there, but I took a gamble and it, didn't, it did not pay off. If I had Tapu Fini here, that would have been really good too, because then I could just bring in Fini. So maybe I should have considered that. So we're going to see the all-out Pummeling. Let's see who it targets. Going to go into Arcanine. Yep, yeah, I should have switched that out into Lax, probably. So it means Feramos will also get a Beast Boost, but now it's going to be a question of who wakes up. Uh, well, whether my Feramos can wake up or not. And I hate that sleep turns. Like, if I wake up next turn, I think I could just win this. Mm. Yeah, I'll bring in Arcanine. Or, sorry, Ninetales to get the hail up. Feramosa really has to protect here, I think. Yeah, you, you really have to protect Feramosa and just attack with Lele. So I'm just going to Blizzard here for sure. And with Feramosa, go for the... Z poison jab or acid downpour onto top of Lele. Fast paced game, but that's kind of the nature of these teams. Oh, it's Scarf Lele. I didn't expect that. That's game, actually. Well played. Yeah, there's nothing I could have done against Scarf Lele. Yeah, other than. Like, Scarf Lele is a really big issue for this team. So, if that weren't Scarf Lele, I felt pretty good about my chances, but Scarf Lele just absolutely wrecks me, especially with Feramosa. So, the one, like. Turn 1 I played really well, turn 2 I walked right into it, and I should have at least maybe sacked my Snorlax, but even if I did with Scarf Lele, I don't think I could have won since Ian put my Pheromosa to sleep, which explains that turn 1 play. So, just bringing Snorlax. So, I kind of got wrecked here, but uh, <laughs> no shame. You know, this matchup was pretty hard as is, and I think... Um, the one tool that would have helped me was having like Feeny in the back instead of Snorlax, because then I could have just switched into... Feeny predicting the Lele switch in and uh, extreme speed it. And that actually pretty much would have won me the game. So even though this game looked relatively one-sided, if I brought Feeny over Snorlax, I think uh, I would have had a really good chance of winning because Lele doesn't do enough against all my Pokemon. But as a result, since I brought Snorlax, hoping to maybe stall games out, uh, I was hoping to like bring it in against Arcanine. You know, that would have been good too. I guess he can still lose if he misses a high jump kick. But Pheromosa does protect, which is the correct play. Um... Yeah, that's actually the best play by far. I could have stockpiled, but that doesn't really do much. I mean, at this point, I'm playing for a high jump kick miss anyway, but I guess stockpile is more important because that play was the most obvious one from Ian's end. So Smeargle faints here, but yeah. Uh, Scarf Lele. That's true. Scarf Lele, Fighting Zemu, Feromosa. I don't know the Nao Ego item. Probably Life Orb. So a really, really hyper-offensive team. But it's definitely pretty cool. Smeargle is like... Definitely a Pokemon that's not used that often in this format, but is really solid. I'm just kind of sad I didn't bring Feeny. Like, I was too scared of the Nioigo and the Zerka Tree. Um, but Feeny would have been... It would have won me the game, pretty much, I think. Because if I bring in... If I switch into Feeny, uh, the turn that I E-speeded... Actually, no, I guess Feromosa would have switched out first, because I'm faster. But I, what I could have done was switched out my Arcanine into Tapu Feeny. Yeah, in prediction of the Lele switch in. So, it, they still would have had Gimme in a pretty decent position, but now I have to hope for a high jump kick miss. If he misses, I actually could still win, I guess, because I don't... I could stall out Psychic with Recycles? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know, I'm praying for a miss. It's my only way to win this. Ah, but he hits it. Yep, good game. Yeah, if he misses it, Snorlax might have actually been able to do the 1v1 against Top of because I can recycle constantly, and I can sell out Psychic Terrain, but of course he could have gotten special defense drops as well. Um, I might have been able to take two Psychic, so like, if High Jump Kick misses and Facade knocks out Feromosa, then I recycle that next turn. And if I recycle, mm, then... Uh, sorry, not recycle, stockpile. If I stockpile, then I don't think another Psychic would knock me out, so after I get that first stockpile, I recycle... And then stockpile again, recycle, stockpile, recycle, and then I get to plus three, and then Snorlax would win. But obviously that's still contingent off a high jump kick miss. 
So, yep, that's pretty much what it came down to there in the end. That was a pretty quick game overall. Like, turn one played out perfectly for me, other than the fact I got put to sleep. And that sleep was actually really important because it meant that Scarf Lele could just come in. Um, yeah. yeah, like, I just, I didn't predict the Lele switch, and I didn't know whether he had it or not, and I should have anticipated it. Because if I do anticipate it, at least I can, excuse me, I could switch out. But I, I guess given the Pokemon I brought, like, I needed Feeny there to reduce the Psychic Terrain and to threaten the Pheromos a little bit more. Like, Snorlax ended up not being the correct call at all, so... I should have sacked the Ninetales. And the other thing was, like, Ninetales... I, I thought, oh, if it's this is not, you know, Scarfini, I can... Or Scarf Lele, I should be fine. Because uh, Ninetales would get a Blizzard off, but since it was Scarf, I just got absolutely screwed. So, good game to Ian there. Uh, always a pleasure to play a top player. And, yeah, he's going to be competing in the Brazil International Championships this weekend. So, good luck to him there. Should be a fun time. And that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like if you did. And I'll catch you guys next time. Alright, peace.